Hi all, today I'm joined by Matt, who is our employment solicitor at Optimal Solicitors. Um, he's joined us in September last year and he's here to answer some common questions from our clients about unfair dismissal. So first of all, Matt, what is unfair dismissal? So in its simplest form, uh, unfair dismissal is where an employee's contract of employment is terminated um, for a reason that is deemed as unfair. Um, there is no statutory definition of what amounts to unfair dismissal. Um, however, the statute does provide five reasons whereby dismissal can be fair. OK, um, so what requirements are needed if you were to make a claim for unfair dismissal? Yeah, so the first uh, requirement, you must be an employee. So people who have self-employed status, they'll, they will not be eligible to bring a claim. Um, also as well, which is very key, is that the claim must be brought within three months, um, less one day of the, the termination of the contract. Um, and also as well, they must have two years service. And um, there are some exceptions to this, which amounts to automatic unfair dismissal. Um, but this is sort of beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. OK, um, so what is the case process? OK, so the case process is once we get um, instructions from our client, um, usually the first instance, what we'll do is we will try and contact the previous employer um, just to see whether they are just to put them on notice that there, there is a possible claim coming um, and just await their response to see how they want to deal with it. Um, if they then just wish to sort of ignore it or they, they don't want to try and enter into any sort of settlement negotiations, and um, then the next step would be to contact ACAS. So ACAS are um, an independent body who will try to settle the matter between the former employee um, and the company. Um, and the ACAS process usually lasts around four weeks, but it can be extended by a further two weeks if both parties agree. If after this, so after ACAS have tried to settle and we've tried to enter into settlement negotiations, then the next step then would be to bring the claim to the tribunal. Um, so we would submit a claim form uh, across to the tribunal. Um, once they receive it, they will then send an acknowledgement of claim um, and that allows the respondent 28 days to respond um, once the defence has then been received, we're then working towards a tribunal date. But if the matter proceeds to tribunal, um, it could be several months between um, us getting instructions and getting a final hearing date. Okay. Um, so how long will it take altogether, would you say? So, like I said, if it, if it takes, if it goes all the way to tribunal, um, it's likely it will take several months. However, um, at any stage it could settle. So um, we've had claims whereby we've sent a letter to the employer in the first instance, they've accepted that they've done wrong or there is a possibility that they've made mistakes and they've entered into settlement negotiations and it's settled within a couple of weeks of receiving instructions from the client. Um, however, just to be aware that if, if that doesn't happen, which unfortunately is quite rare, um, it, it could be several months, but the option of settlement um, is always going to be available up, right up until, you know, a couple of hours before the tribunal hearing. So um, that is something that could always um, happen in a case like these. Okay. And what reasons for dismissal are fair? OK, so there are five reasons for that. Um, statute provide are fair. So first one is capability. Um, so this sort of breaks down into three subcategories. So firstly, you would be looking at qualifications. Um, if the client, if the employee is no longer qualified to carry out the role, um, or secondly, incompetence, they're no longer competent to carry out what their position. Um, and then thirdly, which is the most common um, ground that employers tend to um, rely on its ill health. Um, so that sort of capability. Then there's conduct. Obviously, gross misconduct is going to be a fair reason to dismiss. Redundancy, um, contravention of a statutory duty, um, and finally, some other substantial reason. They're the five reasons that are fair. Okay. 
And um, a lot of clients ask if they um, can be dismissed due to illness, um, a family urgent matter, disability that occurred after they were employed. Um, so would this be counted as unfair dismissal? Yeah, so look, let's, let's break it down. So the first one, so in relation to illness, um, th this is a possibility where it could be a, um, a fair reason. Um, if you're no longer capable to carry out your role that you're employed to do, this could be a fair reason for the employer to dismiss you, um, especially if there's no foreseeable return to work um, or there's no amendments that the employer could make to the role to get you back into work. Um, this could um, become sort of a fair reason for dismissal. Um, in relation to uh, an urgent family matter, um, as a one-off instance, it's very unlikely that this would be viewed as a fair reason to dismiss someone. However, if there was persistent absences, then it is more likely that this could fall under the category of some other substantial reason. So obviously employers need to ensure that their employees are available to carry out work. Um, and if they're no longer available um, or they're off on sort of regular occurrences, then they may need to then look at termination. Um, but like I say, as a one off, it's very unlikely that this will be fair. Um, and the final one was uh, disability. So um, once an employer um, sort of becomes disabled, even if this is after they've started employment, um, they are given further protection by the Equality Act 2010. Um, this is quite a, um, a quite a large subject and it's sort of beyond the scope of what we're, we're looking at today. But it's just to be aware that there are further obligations if, a, if an employee is classed as being disabled. Okay, um, and finally, uh, an example situation asked by a lot of clients is that they've been dismissed from working at a company after a long period of time, but gained uh, this job initially through an agency. So can they be dismissed without a disciplinary meeting or an explanation from them? So in them certain circumstances, um, it's, it's not best practice to do that. Um, even if they are an agency worker, you would still hope that they would be given a meeting to explain it, maybe to put forward an argument why they should still um, carry out their position. However, the overriding issue with this is that agency workers don't have the same um, status as employees and therefore they would not be able to bring an unfair dismissal claim. Um, so unfortunately, they wouldn't really be able to do anything on that, but you would hope that um, a good agency worker would sort of carry out a, a procedure um, to allow the, the agency worker to um, sort of explain the reasoning behind the dismissal. Okay. Um, so if, if people obviously do use these agencies to find work, um, is that agency obligated to provide them work on a daily basis? Um, and what if they are stopped, stopped calling? Yeah, so it, it is unlikely. So with an agency worker, they won't have a um, contract of employment. They're likely to have um, terms of engagements, uh, terms of engagement. So that will be where um, the agency will provide them work sort of as and when they can, but they're under no sort of legal obligation to provide them work. So the work could stop um, and this is very unfortunate. Um, but it is just sort of one of the downsides to agency work. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, Matt, thank you very much for joining me today. And no please, if anybody has any questions, please uh, take a look at the contact details below. Thank you.